Hello everyone, I'm Sheena and welcome to my channel Comprehend Biotech. Today's topic of discussion is restriction mapping. But before we start, in case you're here by chance and you have no clue what this subject is about, please do not leave so soon. Check out the description of this video and you will see a timestamp which says stay motivated. So please do go check that out and maybe that's just a quote you needed to start your day strong or to end it at a positive note. And for the others who are here today, the topic for discussion today is restriction mapping. And it's just not that. Today we'll be discussing almost all the questions that have come in the gate exam from this very topic. So I'm excited to share this information with you. I hope you are too. So let's get started. Come again. So the topic for discussion today is restriction mapping. Before we go into what is restriction mapping, I want to give you an idea about what is mapping and what are we doing with mapping in genomics, right? Now, suppose you want to go from place A to place B. What do you do? Uh, you ask someone's help if you do not know the way already. And mostly those people, what, uh, whom, whomever you're asking for guidance, they will tell you certain landmarks right? That there might be a hospital that is coming in between or a bank that comes in between these two places. So you know, if you see these landmarks, you know you're going in the right way, correct? Just like that, to understand the structure of a genome, to understand what is the structure of a chromosome, because once we get the DNA, we only, after sequencing, we might know the uh, order of nucleotide, but which sequence comes after what and the complete shape of the chromosome which gene is, uh, comes where, all those things we do not know. So for that, we need to do certain kind of mapping. So in case of restriction mapping, what we do is we use restriction sites as the landmarks. So if you have information about these restriction sites, you'll be able to map the whole chromosomes with the help of overlapping sequences. Okay, we'll go into detail about what it is, but basically in restriction mapping, restriction sites uh, are the ones which we are going to use as landmarks. What are restriction sites? Restriction sites are uh, certain sequences, okay, DNA sequences, which are recognized by uh, certain uh, restriction endonucleases, okay. So a particular endonuclease, restriction endonuclease will uh, go and cut or cleave only at a particular DNA sequence. So it recognizes that sequence and then it goes and cuts over there, okay. So that is what is a restriction site. And uh, we will see how we are going to use these restriction sites to actually map. Also, restriction mapping comes under a broad topic of physical mapping. There are basically the two types of mapping. Okay, you have physical mapping as well as genetic mapping. This restriction mapping comes under physical mapping. In physical mapping, what we do is we find out the distance between two uh, DNA sequences in terms of base pairs. Okay, just like in uh, when you say from uh, uh, when you find distance between two places how do you measure it mostly in kilometer kilometers or miles right so likewise how many base pairs are there between the two landmarks that we have mentioned so in restriction mapping we'll be seeing between one restriction site and another restriction site what is the uh, number of or what are the number of base pairs that come in between dna is formed with base pairs right so how many base pairs are between two particular restriction sites so this is just one type of physical mapping. There are other types. There is FISH, uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization, and uh, there is STS uh, mapping, okay, uh, sequence tag site mapping. So all those also come under physical mapping, but this is the first one that we'll be learning, okay? So let's see what is restriction mapping. Restriction mapping uses specific restriction enzymes to cut an unknown segment of DNA at short, known base sequences called as restriction sites. I hope we have established that, right? Now, for example, the restriction enzyme ECO-R1, taken from SGDC of coli, always cuts at the sequence GAATTC, CTTAAG. So that is the palindromic sequence that it recognizes and goes and cuts, okay? Therefore, if we use ECO-R1 to cut the DNA, we know that the DNA sequence, either side of the cut will be AATT. So you can see over here, this is the sequence that ECO-R1 recognizes and it cuts between G and A, right? After cutting, on both the strands, you will see these overhangs, AATT, AATT. Okay, that is what 
uh, it's being said, whenever ecoarbon goes and cuts anywhere in the DNA uh, sequence, like it will cut only where it has its recognition sequence, when it does that, the overhangs that we'll have is AATT. So that, that's how we recognize where this particular recognition enzyme has cut. So what we're going to do over here is, whichever DNA fragment that we are going to form a map of, uh, we will do the restriction digestion with two or more enzymes, restriction enzymes, okay? So uh, individually, we'll be putting the restriction enzyme to the DNA fragment and seeing what are the number of fragments that we get. Finally, we'll uh, combine all the restriction enzymes and put it on in, into the DNA sample and see what the mixture gives us. And based on the data collected from that, we'll be forming a map. I'll go into it in detail. Okay, so this is what it says. First, you put one particular restriction enzyme, you find out the pattern or the band pattern that you get in gel electrophoresis. Then you add the second restriction enzyme. Then you add a combination of both. That is what's being shown over here. So if you cut this linear DNA with enzyme one, you still get certain pieces of certain length. So what you will do, you will do a gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is a technique wherein we load the DNA sample and when you run the gel, the DNA being negatively charged, it moves from the negative end to the positive end. And in this process, because of the pore size of your gel, because of its consistency, the DNA is separated according to its size. The smaller molecules will move faster towards the positive end and the larger molecules will be left more of at the negative end. Okay, so that is what you see over here. At a particular time, 3KB1 has moved ahead of all these pieces. So once you have cut your linear DNA with the restriction enzymes, you're going to do the gel electrophoresis and see where the band is being formed. And when you combine enzyme one and enzyme two, and that means you're going to cut this linear DNA with both these enzymes together, you'll get another pattern. So this is kind of a fingerprint, restriction fingerprint for the DNA sample with enzyme one, restriction enzyme one. This is a particular fingerprint with enzyme two. This is a particular print with enzyme one and two. So we'll see exactly how this is done. This is just a diagram which shows us, okay? But before we go into that, we need to know how are we understanding the sizes, right? Just by running the uh, gel, how do we find out that this particular band is of this particular base pair size, right? So in order to understand the size of the DNA fragments, we generally construct a calibration curve, okay? The so calibration curve is constructed by using a sample in which we know what and all DNA fragments are there, the size of the DNA fragments in that sample. And we'll run it in the gel and we'll plot a graph between the size and the distance migrated by those pieces. Okay, so size is already known to you and through the gel electrophoresis experiment, you'll be able to know what is the distance traveled. So you can see this calibration curve here, you have in the X axis, the distance migrated here in the Y axis, the size of DNA. So this is for a known sample, okay? We will be knowing each band, what is the size of it. So you will plot for, for example, this 23,130 base pair size, right? So it's a large size. It has not moved much distance. Here is the well, it has moved only so much, right? So uh, distance migrated is only so much and the size is so high. So you can see this is the point that denotes this particular um, DNA fragment. And if you look at this one, this has migrated such a long distance, it's 564 base pairs. And so it has migrated this long distance and it has a smaller size in KBs or base pairs, whatever units you're using. So that is how you plot a graph with the known values. So you get a calibration curve. Now, when you have an unknown sequence or unknown uh, data, if you get certain bands, you can always compare where this is coming in, um, with I, you will be able to see where it is coming nearby. You know, this is 4,361 base pairs long. So it will be somewhere uh, around 5,000. So that is, you can have a rough estimate with your eye. But other than that, if you just put these values in the equation for this graph, you will get the size by the distance migrated. So if you know the distance, how much this base pair, uh, this fragment has migrated, you'll be able to find what is the size of this particular band? So that is how you find the sizes. Okay, so with this diagram, we are going to see how restriction mapping is actually done. So in labs, you will find uh, that you're working with plasmids and like circular DNA. So there might be questions on restriction mapping based on circular DNA. Here, the example being taken is a linear DNA. 
but please do not get confused if you understand the concept over here it will be very easy to solve the restriction mapping question by the way we are going to solve the gate questions from the restriction mapping topic towards the end of this video so please uh, have a look at how it is actually done and you'll understand it better towards the end what we are trying to do okay so what are they saying over here? We have many copies of cloned 5 KB linear DNA fragment. Of course, uh, sometimes you might know the size, actual size of the DNA, sometimes you might not. But here for our ease, they have already mentioned that the actual DNA fragment is of 5 KB size. So you can see this is the same DNA fragment, but multiple copies of it. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take these samples and you're going to treat it with restriction enzymes. Okay. So if you look at this gel electrophoresis uh, setup over here to so the first well you are adding a marker we already saw what is the use of a marker we can form a calibration curve from where we can compare the uh, and understand what is the size of an unknown fragment right so in the first well we have put a marker in the second one we are putting the sample just like that without using any restriction enzymes we are putting a control so the uncut dna fragment has been put over here so whatever is the size of the DNA fragment, the, uh, the, according to that only, its movement will be seen in the gel. So you can see over here, uh, if you see the ladder being given over here, 5, 4.53, this is the size in kilo base pairs. Okay. So this particular size, if you just visually see, it is somewhere near to 5 KB. And of course, because initially, our DNA fragment is 5 KB. So I hope you have understood that why it is over here. Its size is 5 KB. And please understand this is just not a single molecule of DNA. It's multiple copies of DNA, same DNA fragment. Okay. Only then we'll be able to see it as a band. If there's only a single molecule, it's not easy to visualize it on a gel. So you need multiple copies. And the sample itself will contain multiple copies of the same DNA fragments. And that is when you see it as a band. Okay. In the second well, what we're going to do is we are going to take the sample again. We are going to put eco R1 restriction enzyme to it. Okay. And we are going to load it into the well. When we loaded it and when we run the gel, we get two fragments. Two fragments means what? If you have a linear molecule, if there has to be two fragments, that means eco R1 has come, cut somewhere in between. So it so one restriction site is there and you get two pieces. And these two pieces are of different sizes. You can see definitely one piece is just lesser than the 5 kb mark, and another piece is very, very small and so visually you can understand it's nearly 0.5 kb okay in the third well what you will do is you will take another uh, the same sample another uh, what to say another set of the same sample you will cut it with bam h1 treat it with bam h1 and you're going to load it when you treat it with bam h1 bam h1 might have another restriction site okay not uh, somewhere different at some different base pair sequence is what uh, bam h1 recognizes right so it will cut at a different place. And since there are two fragments coming out of this, so that also means that there's one place where damage one goes and cuts. Okay. So that is roughly 3 KB and 2 KB. You can see the bands over here. Lastly, what you will do is, you will take a sample, you're going to add both eco R1 and damage one together into it. And you will see what are the fragments you're getting. So once you do that, you get three pieces three bands are formed. One is 2.5, one is 2, and one is 0.5. Okay, so what you will do is you will form a restriction map using this data. Let us see how that is done. Okay, and uh, this is just the calibration curve that has been plotted using this marker. Okay, from this only we'll be at, uh, getting the correct size of these pieces by using the equation of this graph. You just have to substitute how much distance these bands have traveled and you will know what is the size accurately. Okay. So this is the data that we got, right? Uncut K has uh, 5 KB size. Eco R1 has 4.5 and 0 0.5 KB uh, fragments. The one cut with BAM H1 has 3 KB and 2 KB pieces. And the one cut with Eco R1 and BAM H1 has all these three pieces, okay? So we gradually start to form a map. So if you see the interpretation part, uh, this is the uncut one, 5 KB, correct? The one cut with Eco R1, it can be cut over here like this, 0.5, and the rest is 4.5. Basically, 5 minus 4.5, 4.5. Just simple maths, okay? I'm not going to explain it like that, plus and minus stuff, but I hope it is clear that uh, since we have two pieces, 
And of course, there's a chance that it can cut over here, 4.5 and 0.5 can be over here also. But then we will be seeing which uh, one to use, okay? And then you have BAM H1, right? BAM H1 has a 3 KB piece and 2 KB. So we are assuming that it is first cutting at a 3 KB over here, okay? And so you have a 3 KB piece over here and a 2 KB piece over here. Okay, so now what we will do, using these data, we will be forming two models, okay, of which could be the possible map of this, uh, restriction map of this DNA fragment. So, using this data, how are we going to do it? You prepare a model A, in that you're marking ecohyphen has cut at 0.5, and you have left it like that. Now, there is a chance that BAM H1 could be cutting over here at 2 KB, or it could be cutting over here, 3 KB. Any two, one of the two possibilities are there. So, you make a model which shows both the possibilities, okay? You can try and make a model where uh, eco one is cutting at this end also, okay? Uh, anyways, you'll come to the same answer. So you have got two models over here where BAM H1 is cutting over here and another way it is cutting over here because you're getting a 3 KB and a 2 KB piece in both the cases, right? So how do you check which model is right? For that, you will use the last data over here, eco one plus BAM H1, right? So what do you understand from that? You understand that uh, the pieces should be 2.5, 2, and 0.5 KB. So when you check, uh, you have 0.5, 1.5, and 3 KB. Definitely not the right one. Here, if you check, you have 0.5, 2.5, and 2 KB, which matches with this data. That means your uh, conclusion is that eco one and bam one data indicate model B is correct. Okay, so this is a very simple example of how restriction mapping is done so basically what have you what is the outcome of this what did you understand you have understood what is or where is the restriction site for eco r1 and bam h1 in this particular dna fragment what is the distance in kilo base pairs or base pairs between these two restriction uh, sites okay so that means your restriction sites are landmarks and you're finding the distance so that is physically mapping it okay so how do you do the mapping so whatever sample you have been given, whichever genomic DNA sample you have been given, you will do the restriction digestion using a number of restriction enzymes, not just two. In the example we saw with uh, two enzymes, but more than two are taken. And what these uh, enzymes will do is they will go and cut at their own specific recognition sites. Finally, we'll get a lot of fragments. Uh, and each of these fragments will have certain sequences which are common to each other. That means you will have overlapping sequences. So we use these overlapping sequences, we compile the data, we arrange the overlapping sequences in such a way that we get the complete uh, map of the genomic DNA. So that is how restriction di uh, digestion can be used as a mapping technique. So this is just a physical mapping technique, okay? Another point to be noted over here is this restriction mapping technique can be used for uh, mapping genomes which are less than 50 KB size. Why? Because if you use a larger genome, more than 50 KB, the number of restriction fragments that you get will be so huge and it will be very difficult to uh, physically map the total genome because there will be many re repetitive sequences and uh, it, uh, you might lose the accuracy in um, aligning the overlapping sequences, right? So what to do if we want to map a genome that is greater than 50 KB? Can restriction mapping be used then? Yes, we can use it provided we use something called rare cutters. Now rare cutters can be of, uh, can come under two categories. One of them could be those restriction enzymes that actually go and recognize only a seven base pair motif or an eight base pair motif. So those are rare restriction enzymes because generally you will see restriction enzymes that have recognition sites which are four base pair or six base pair, right? So the ones with seven and eight will be rarer. Second type could be those restriction enzymes which only go and uh, or which have the recognition sites at, at unique DNA sequences. So again, the appearance of those unique DNA sequences within your genome might be very rare. So what these two types of rare cutters do is they reduce the number of restriction fragments that will be formed and then it will be easier for us to form a map. So that's how you can use rare cutters to map a genome that is greater than 50 KB.
another way uh, wherein you can have a direct examination of restriction sites. So that technique is called optical mapping. I'm not going into the detail of that. Please uh, let me know if you want to know the technique of optical mapping. You can just uh, write it down in the comment box or something. Basically, uh, what you do over there is you take a slide that or a microscopic slide which has been coated with restriction enzymes, inactive restriction enzymes. You take your DNA sample, you dissolve it in a molten uh, agarose and you drop that onto your glass slides. As the uh, agarose solidifies, your uh, DNA molecule inside, mixed inside the agarose gel also stretches. Okay. And then you wash it down with a uh, solution of MgCl2. So the magnesium ions present in that will active, uh, make the restriction enzymes active. Once the restriction enzymes are active, they will, they will cut the DNA strands wherever the uh, uh, restriction site was there. Okay. And then you stain your DNA molecules with DAPI, a fluorescent dye and you observe it under a fluorescent microscope. So wherever you see a nick, okay, so wherever the cut has been there, there there will be no dye. So you'll be able to see strands of DNA on the microscope slide. So you'll know exactly where the restriction sites are. So that, that is in a nutshell what is optical mapping. Now we come to the part where we'll be discussing the gate questions uh, from uh, past 10 years, okay. So as I was going through that, out of 10 question papers of the past 10 year question papers, seven of them have questions coming from restriction mapping. So I thought it is important to you know, put it out there so to help you out. Of course, when we study the concept, uh, these little, little things which they ask in the questions uh, may not be taught. So I have uh, compiled everything together and I have put it uh, <laughs> in a way that you'll be able to understand. Please do not mind the diagrams. I have drawn them kind of in a hurry. So just to make you guys understand. Okay, so let's start with the questions. Okay. So this is a question that came from uh, GATE 2011. Uh, the question is restriction endonucleases which recognize and cut same recognition sequences are known as what? So answer is uh, isoschizomers. Iso okay, so isoschizomers, for example, SPH1 and BBU1, they both have the same recognition sequence. You can see C, G, T, A, C, uh, G. Okay, so those enzymes, restriction enzymes, which go and recognize the same recognition sequences are called iso isoschizomers. That's like a very straight question. Let's see what we have as the next. So this is a question from GATE 2013. What is the question? A complete restriction digestion of circular plasmid 5000 base pair was carried out with HIN3, BAMH1 and ECOR1 individually. Restriction digestion yielded following fragments. So you have a circular fragment or circular plasmid with the size of 5000 base pairs. It was cut by these three restriction enzymes individually. And the restriction uh, fragments that you got, the data that you got was this. When you cut it with HIN3, you got pieces of 1,200 and 3,800 base pairs. When you cut it with BAMH1, you got 5,000 as well as uh, 5,000 base pair piece. And when you cut it with ECO R1, you get 2,500 base pair pieces. Okay. So they're asking the number of sites for ECO R1, BAMH1 and HIN3 present on this plasmid are. Basically, they're asking how many sites are present, restriction enzyme sites, okay, where recognition sites are present on the plasma. It's a very simple question, but still I have made a small diagram for you. So if you look at the first one, plasmid plus HIND3, of course it has to have two restriction sites, only then it will give a 1200 base pair piece and a 3800 base pair piece. Plasmid plus damage one gives a 5000 base pair piece. That means what, if it has a single cut over here, that is when, when this becomes a linear molecule, this will be 5000 base pair piece. Right, and when you cut it with eco R1, they are saying that they get a band which has only 2500 base pairs. That means what eco R1 must have two sites and it cuts exactly uh, in it into two halves. That is why you will get one piece over here 2500 and another piece over here 2500. That's why when you do the gel electrophoresis, you will only have 2500 base pair as the band forming. Okay, so from that, if you look, what will be the answer? Of course, eco R1 has two sites, BAMH1 has one site, and HIN3 three has two sites. So A is the option. Simple. Okay, so this is the question from GATE 2015. So what is the question? 
A linear double-stranded DNA of length 8 kilo base pairs has three restriction sites. Each of these can be either a BAMH1 or HAE3 site. The DNA was digested completely with both enzymes. The products were purified and subjected to an end filling reaction using clino fragment and uh, an isotope that is radioactive isotope of phosphorus DCTP. The products of the end filling reactions were purified, resolved by electrophoresis, stained with ethidium bromide, and then subjected to autoradiography. The corresponding images are shown below. So you have this particular sample uh, uh, gel, which has been stained with ethidium bromide. And then you're going to analyze the same thing un under an autoradiograph. And they're asking, out of these four, which is the uh, correct map? or how can um, you have cut it with uh, BAMH1 and HAE3, right? So which of these represent the correct map? Uh, apart from that, they have given us uh, the recognition sites for BAMH1 and HAE3. So how do we find out this particular, or how do we solve this particular uh, restriction mapping? So if you look over here, this is basically, we don't have to do mapping over here at all. You don't have to analyze it like that. The concept that you need to know over here is about the sticky ends and blunt ends. What? So if you look at BAMH1's recognition site, wherever BAMH1 will cut, it will leave a sticky end, right? It will leave an overhang of CCTAG on both the sides. So it will leave a sticky end. But HAE3 is a blunt end cutter it cuts directly in between. So there will be no sticky ends left. Okay, you can see over here, no? it cuts directly over here like this. There are no sticky ends. Now, if you read the question carefully, your DNA, which was digested, was end filled using clino fragment. Clino fragment is a DNA polymerase enzyme, which will go and fill up the sticky ends. So it will convert the sticky ends into blunt ends. And it is going to use what? It is going to use a radioactive CTP. Okay, so that you have to keep in mind. So only those fragments which have a sticky end will be filled in with this clino fragment or and radioactive CTP. Okay, so when you're looking at the data given by gel electrophoresis, right? Ethidium bromide is a normal uh, uh, dye that is used to uh, uh, what to say identify where the DNA bands are. So wherever your DNA band is there, uh, ethidium bromide goes and binds to the DNA the groove of DNA and so all the bands will be seen so you you can see over here this is the marker you can see three bands over here okay you can see this band this band and this band correct but when you see auto radiograph auto radiograph is where you you will be able to notice if there is a radioactive substance so you out of this three you only have two pieces or two bands which are being seen in an auto radiograph that means what these two pieces will have a radioactive CTP at its end. So you have to select and selectively understand where could uh, this, uh, what is a uh, CTP gone, have, uh, gone and added. And you're particularly seeing there are 300, the intensity of radiography is given, how much radioactivity was seen. Here it is 300 and this is 900. So how do we find out? The answer is A. Instead of going at how A came, I'll tell you why A is the answer, then you'll be able to understand it better. So for example, um, BAMH1 is going to cut, it will leave a sticky end, right? Whereas HAE3 will not leave a sticky end, it will be giving a uh, what to say, a blunt end. So if you're considering the first case, this first uh, answer now, BAMH1 is cutting here, BAMH1 is cutting here, HA3 is cutting over here. If BAMH1 cuts over here, you have a sticky end over here, which will be filled with your radioactive CTP. This orange color is denoting that a radioactive substance has come and added over here, just for representation. And since this piece is over here, here also sticky end is being repaired. Same way BAMH1 cuts over here, so this end will have a sticky end, which is being repaired. And this, this piece, will be over here. So you can see, right, this is over here, this piece is over here, this piece is over here, this piece is over here. This is being cut by HA3, it has a blunt end. So after repair, there is no addition of DCTP to it. So if you uh, analyze that, there are three, uh, if you see two KB molecules now, one end over here, you have radioactivity. Here you have two ends with radioactivity, right? So two KB molecules are having 900, uh, intensity and 3 KB 
is having 300. So almost three times, right? So that is how it is. Three KP molecules, you're seeing only one side is there. So that's why uh, if it is, if you consider the ratio between 3 KB and 2 KB, this is 2 KB will be having thrice the radioactivity than 3 KB molecules because this has only at the one, at one end, but 2 KB molecules cumulatively, if you see at three places, it has radio, radioactivity. So it will show more intensity. So that is why it has 2 KB molecules has 900 radioactive intensity. And whereas you have 3 KB molecule has uh, only 300. So 1 is to 3 is the ratio of intensity. And this is how we found it out. So if you check in the other examples, you will come to the conclusion that only this particular combination can give you this particular intensity. Okay. So yeah, that is how you got your answer. If you have any doubt, please do ask me in the comment section. Okay. So next is the question that came in GATE 2016. Okay. A 1.2 KB DNA fragment was cloned into BAMH1 and EcoR1 sites located on a 2.8 kilo base pair cloning vector. So you have a cloning vector over here of 2.8 kilo base pair size. A 1.2 kilo base pair insert was cloned into this, where at the BAMH1 site. Okay. The BAMH1 and EcoR1 sites are adjacent to each other. You can see, right? The vector contains an XHO1 site. You can see over here located upstream of the BAMH1 size. So this is upstream, this is downstream. So XHO1 is at the upstream. So the diagram is given, so it's very clear. An internal XHO1 site is present in the gene sequence as shown. So this is your insert. It also has an XHO1 uh, site, okay? The resultant recombinant plasmid is digested with ECOR1 and XHO1 and analyzed through one person agarose gel electrophoresis. So you have done the recombination cloning you have done, then you're going to uh, add ECOR1 and XHO1 to the recombinant clone and you're going to do the gel electrophoresis. Then they're saying that assuming complete digestion with ECOR1 and XHO1, the fragments visible on the agarose gel will correspond to. Before we go into the sizes and how to do it, I hope you understand what is complete digestion, what is partial digestion. Complete digestion means all the plasmids, the recombinant plasmids were cut at every EcoR1 site and at every XHO1 site. Okay, that is called complete digestion. But in partial digestion, what happens is sometimes that EcoR1 um, uh, site, one of one or two of the EcoR1 site might not have been cut or one plasmid might not have been cut by XHO1. So that is partial digestion. So when you're talking about complete digestion, whatever plasmid copies were there in the sample, all of them have been cut at ECOR1 and all of them have been cut at XHO1, okay? Okay, so they're asking, what are the possible uh, fragment sizes that you will get in the gel electrophoresis? Okay, I have drawn another diagram over here. So this is your uh, vector without the insert, right? So I have inserted this DNA fragment over here between uh, at BAMH1. So this is how it will look like. At one end, it will have BAMH1. At the other end, it will have its ECOR1 uh, restriction site. Okay. Um, so you can see uh, this as total, it is 2.8 KB. So I've drawn it over here. From here to here, it is 2.8 KB. And your insert is 1.2 KB. That is 1,200 base pairs. And it is already said that this particular fragment is 500 base pairs. So of course, this piece will be 700 base pairs. And this information is also given. There's a 300 base pair piece over here, different uh, distance between these two restriction sites. Okay. Now they're saying that you're going to digest this uh, recombinant plasmid or recombinant vector with ECOR1 and XHO1, complete digestion. So wherever ECOR1 uh, site is there and wherever XHO1 site is there, you will have a cut. So you will have a cut over here, you will have a cut over here, you will have a cut over here. Okay, so you need to know what will be the size of these fragments. So what will be the size of this fragment? This we have already said it is 700 base pairs. Okay, and this piece between XHO1 and XHO1, there is no cut on BAMH1. So this is a whole piece. So 300 plus 500, this is 800 base pairs. Another piece that you will have is ECOR1 to XHO1, this piece. This is totally 2,800. So this will be 2,800 minus 300, that is 2,500. So your, op so your option C is correct, right? 2,500, 700, and 800. So that is the answer for this. Simple. Next question came in GATE 2017. Let's see what it is. 
So shown below is a plasmid vector P and an insert Q. The insert was cloned into a BAM H1 site. So here it is going to be cloned. Uh, the recombinant plasmid was isolated and digested with BAM H1 or XO, XO, XHO1. Okay, so uh, we don't we're not adding the combination individually. You have put BAM H1 and XHO1 to uh, digest this. Okay, the results from the digestion experiments are shown over here. This is R, correct? So which one of the following explains the digestion results shown in R? So they're asking whether the insert did not ligate or one copy of insert was ligated or insert ligated to the vector as two tandem copies, the insert ligated to the vector as two copies, but not in tandem. So in tandem means one after the other or in repeated mode, okay? So how do we find that? We will try to insert and see. So this is an example. Uh, first of all, we will consider, suppose there was no insertion at all. At that time, uh, if like this piece was not inserted, if you're going to restriction, do restriction digestion uh, with BAM H1 alone, there'll be a single cut over here. And uh, the band that you will get in the gel electrophoresis should be only of size 5 kb, right? This will be a single cut. So you should only get 5 kb plasmid over here. But that is not the case. In BAM H1, you're getting two pieces, right? So it means that the insert has been uh, cloned into your vector. Another uh, case is your insert has been cloned. And let us see what are the fragments you will get if there's one copy of insert that has been cloned, OK? So you, you, you're going to cut, when you're going to cut only the BAM H1, you will have one cut over here as well as one cut over here. Correct, because it has two sides over here like this. Now it has been inserted. You will have one cut here, one cut here. So this is one KB size and this is five KB size. So you will have over here uh, two pieces. That is correct. That is uh, giving us a right one. When we are cutting it with BAM H1, we are getting two pieces. One is at five KB, one is at one KB. Let us see what will happen when we cut it with XHO1. One cut will be made over here. Correct. That means there should be, if there is only one cut, it should be a single molecule of size uh, total, 5 plus 1, that is 6 kb. From here, 300, 5000, and 700. This piece, this linear piece will be 6000 base pairs. So you should only get one, um, or to say, fragment, which is 6 kb. But no, that is not the case. XHO1, when we cut it with XHO1, we are getting two fragments. We are getting 6 kb as well as 1 kb. So there's a possibility that two copies of uh, your enzyme, I mean, uh, DNA fragment has been inserted. Let's see that possibility. So suppose that fragment has been inserted twice in tandem repeatedly. What happens when you cut it with BAM H1, you will get a cut over here, you will get a cut over here, you will get a cut over here. So one piece will be 5 KB and the other two pieces will be 1 KB, 1 KB. So again, this is correct. You get 5 KB and 1 KB piece. So uh, what will happen when you cut it with XHO1? Let's see what are the fragments that you get. get. So XHO1 is going to cut over here and over here. So if it is going to cut at two places, you will have two fragments. One is this and the other one is this complete one. Okay, from here to here. So we have to see what are the sizes. So this piece from here to here is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3, that is 1 kb. And this piece is 0 0.7, 5, and 0 0.3. That means 5, uh, 5 plus 1, 0 0.7, 0 0.3 is 1, right? So you have a total of 6 kb. So 6 kb and 1 kb piece. Is that what we get? Uh, are we getting in R? Yes, that is it. So you have 6 kb piece over here, 1 kb piece over here. That means what? Your option C, that means the insert ligated to the vector as two tandem copies. Okay, so C is the answer. The fourth one was there that insert is ligated to the vector as two copies, but not in tandem. But you can imagine, right, if these are not in repeated one after the other, if it is somewhere here, the number of fragments will be different. So you, uh, that is not the answer. Okay, that is why it is not the answer. Okay, I hope it is clear. Okay, so in the same question paper, that is, this is which one, Gate 2017, you had another question from uh, restriction mapping. Okay, so what was the question? eco armor restriction sites on a 10 KB DNA fragment are shown below. This is a 10 KB fragment. These are all the restriction sites for eco armor. They are saying upon partial digestion, what are the lengths in KBs of all the possible DNA fragments? So if you relate back, I had told you the difference between complete digestion and partial digestion. Uh, complete digestion means that every DNA fragment will be cut at all the eco-arvin sites. 
Okay, but partial digestion sites means few of the DNA fragments might be cut at all places. Few of them might be cut only at 2 kb and 7 kb, where or 4 kb and 10 kb. Few of them might not even be cut. That is partial digestion. So they are asking if partial digestion happens, what are all the possible DNA fragments you could get? So there are numerous possibilities. What are all the possibilities? First possibility is there is no cut at all. At that place, at, during that time, you will get a whole 10 kb molecule. So 10 should be the anyways there. So from that itself, you'll get the answer, okay. But still, how do we get all these pieces? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, let us see. So if it, if it cuts over here, we get a two KB piece and a eight KB piece. So two and eight is all. If it cuts over here alone, you get four KB and six KB. So four and six is solved. And if this four KB is further cut over here, you get two KB and two KB another. If it is cut over here and here, you get a three KB piece. Then which one are you looking? 7 KB. If it cuts just over here, you get a 7 KB piece. So this is a, all, all the possibility that is there. So what is the tricky point over here? What happens is many of us get confused or we do not have a clear idea about partial and complete digestion. So if you do not know that, you might just think that equal one will cut at these points. So you will get 2 KB, 2 KB, 3 KB and 3 KB. So 2 and 3 KB. So you might answer this question. I mean, you might say that to, uh, D is the answer. So this is the catch over here. What is partial digestion and what is complete digestion? So look for what kind of digestion is happening. Okay. Next, you have GATE 2018. So only the past few years, you have uh, GATE questions which ask for, uh, you just have to write the answers. Okay. There is no option, multiple choice questions. So many of the questions are coming in this format. You have to fill in the blanks. Okay. So it is kind of difficult at times, but if you know the concept, majority of the questions you can try answering. So what is the question in GATE 2018? Genomic DNA isolated from a bacterium was digested with a restriction enzyme that recognizes a six base pair motif. Assuming random distribution of bases, the average length of the fragments generated is. So they are asking, what will be the length of average length of the fragments? So there's actually a formula for this. Okay, uh, the length, average length of a fragment which is cut by a particular restriction enzyme is equal to four raised to. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, four raised to n. Four because there are four nucleotides, right? At ATCG. So there are four different possibilities that can happen, four different combinations that can happen. So four raised to n, where n is the uh, number of uh, bases in your restriction site. Okay, so if you're saying that it is a it is a restriction enzyme that recognizes six base pair sequence. N over here is six. So the answer for this particular question is four raised to six. That is the answer is 4096. So if you write 4096, that answer is correct. Whatever else you're going to write over them, you're going to be scored negatively. Okay, so if it was a eight base pair motif or a four base pair motif, you just have to change this N. So that will be the average length in base pairs. Okay, done. Also, um, be careful, this answer is in base pairs, right? If they are asking in kilo base pairs, make sure you have shifted the decimals and write it, uh, written it in correct units. So those are all the tricky parts where you can go wrong. Sometimes you might get the uh, formula right, but go wrong with the units, okay? So in the same question paper, GATE 2018 question paper, another question has been asked from restriction mapping, okay? The question is, the product of complete digestion of plasmid shown below with EcoR1 and HAE3 was purified. So it's a complete digestion. So all HAE3 uh, restriction size and all EcoR1 size have been cut for all the plasmid copies, whichever was there. Okay. So they have been cut and purified and uh, used as a template in reaction containing clino fragment of DNA polymerase, DNTPs and alpha 32P DATP in a suitable reaction buffer. Again, clino fragment is coming. You're using radioactively labeled phosphorus. That means it has something to do with sticky ends and blunt ends. The product thus obtained was purified and subjected to gel electrophoresis followed by autoradiography. So you need to know all the fragments that were formed will be seen in gel electrophoresis because you're going to stain it with ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide uh, goes and binds with all the DNA molecules irrespective of the size. Okay. But that is not the case with autoradiography. Autoradiography will only uh, show you the results or show you the bands 
wherein you have a radioactively labeled phosphorus okay and where the radioactively labeled phosphorus come from all those fragments which had their sticky ends repaired they will be taking in the radioactive uh, uh, radioactively labeled uh, ntp nucleotide okay so you can see uh, eco r1 has a uh, recognition site which when it cuts that recognition site it will leave sticky ends but hae3 is a blunt end cutter it does not leave sticky ends okay so they are asking the number of bands that will appear on x ray film so how many bands will you be seeing in x ray film they are asking so for that you will just draw and see uh, of course just draw uh, where and all it will cut and what are the sizes of pieces you will get so you will get a cut over here you get a cut over here you get a cut over here right complete digestion so this is a 3 kb molecule with hab ha1 cut sorry i have written it as one over here please forgive me uh, hae3 cutting over here eco r1 cutting over here correct this piece of 1 kb where eco r1 cuts over here and hae3 cuts over here and you have a 5 kb piece where you have hae1 cut over here and HAE3 uh, cut over here. Okay, on both ends you have HAE3, but we need to know that only those with eco R1 cuts will have a sticky end, and they will be repaired with by the clino fragment using your radioactively labeled NTP. So this end will be radioactively labeled. This end will be radioactively labeled. The ones cut by HAE3 will not be radioactively labeled because it's a blunt cut. You do not need a repair. so what will happen these three fragments 3 kb 1 kb 5 kb fragments will be there on your uh, gel electrophoresis forests but when you do the auto radiography only these two pieces 3 kb fragment and 1 kb fragment will be seen so the number of bands that will appear on the x ray film is 1 2 that is two fragment bands you will be able to see clear so that is it so this these were all the questions that i found in the past uh, 10 year question papers and uh, please let me know that if this is a good idea you know after discussion discussing a topic is it good to discuss these questions after your uh, uh, normal class okay please let me know if you have understood what has been taught over here and if you have any doubts please do ask me in the comment section as well as okay. always i'll leave you with a quote and the one for today more than a motivation it is something that will make you think i hope it makes you think it is nothing but imagine your life is perfect in every respect what would it look like have you ever thought that what is your ideal life have you ever thought about it so when we talk about life we all have our own share of troubles our own share of uh, maybe regrets or failures or success or whatever it is okay and uh, we limit ourselves based on the experiences that we have had in the past because our experiences are the ones that control our mind in the present right we think that we did try to do something and that did not work out so let me not try that in the future all those things are limitations but have you actually tried to imagine what your ideal life would be like if you had a chance to think that everything is perfect and everything is normal what would you see your life as or who would you be what would you be doing have you ever thought that and uh, today i would like to encourage you to think that because i believe that our thoughts have the power to transform our lives so if you can think it you can definitely achieve it in your life the first step is thought second comes you know you saying it out loud then comes the action and then you see the results right so if you have never done this try doing this imagine what would your life be forget all the limitations forget all the uh, things that are holding you back think at least think for yourself be happy let that bring happiness to you let that bring joy to you so if nothing happens at all but still you have this moment this present moment where you feel happy for yourself stay happy <laughs> and if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel comprehend biotech uh i hope to bring more and more interesting contents for you uh, until next time bye